All right, longest video for a long time. So I hope you enjoy. Doi step, time trial, commentary. I'm just going to commentate the whole thing. Pretty interesting. Um, so I've done some efforts before this, as you do. Done like 40 minutes of sweet, no, 35 minutes of sweet spot up to like doi, then had like a five minute rest and then did a bit more, but didn't feel good. So just cruised the rest towards the palace and then descended because Hayden sent me a message saying we're doing a TT. Uh, so you, the segment starts just under those little gates. I think my time might have been like a couple seconds too early. Um, my lap time, I think I got... I got a decent time today. Anyway, so I'm just sitting on the back because I, I think these guys are both fresh. So I was like, you know what? I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do the whole thing. I mean, they said they were going to do like 30 minutes or 31 minutes or maybe even sub 30. And I was like, you know, like sub 30, you know, requires some effort. Like you have to, you know, try quite a lot. Um, so I was like, oh, I probably will just like hang on for 15 minutes and see. So we got David on the front, David Banana Man. I believe he's leaving Chiang Mai pretty soon. And we've got Hayden who's been here. He's been in some of my other videos in Tour de Landa, um, but he's in Thailand for a year, and it's nice training with him. Um, so yeah, it's pretty pretty good day, to be honest. Quite hot, that was one thing I'd say. I think it was average probably 27 or 28 degrees on this on this ascent of the Doisa Tep, and uh, that's quite hot, and I don't really like... I'm, I'm not too bad in the heat, like pure dry heat. When it's a little bit humid like it is here, I find it... I struggle quite a lot, and I, I was sweating. I was sweating a lot. So anyway, you can see for the first like minute or so, we've been averaging about 300. I think we were like 310 for the first minute. So I was uh, I was like, oh, nah, this this might not be good because I'm, I'm probably going to be getting dropped if we're averaging like 310. I'm not sure if I could do – I mean, I, pr I can fresh, but like after doing some efforts and not – I didn't feel great today. I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, to do this. But I think what often happens, and I, I'm not, not going to – like lie I do this the whole time is just you go out too hard like especially on these longer time trials because people think like oh I want 29 minutes therefore it's a 20 minute effort plus a little bit more it's like nah it's not a 20 minute effort like you have really have to think of it as a half an hour effort and the first 10 minutes like well you should be breathing obviously but like you shouldn't really be hurting that much 10 minutes in and then from 10 minutes to whenever you finish uh around like 30 well from this is probably advice for like anyone going from like 34 35 minutes to like well 20 28 27 obviously if you're doing a 25 minute effort which is the KOM then yeah it's like a 20 minute effort plus a little bit more but um not all of us can bang out 6.2 watts per kilo for 25 minutes like the old KOM old Alex has uh so yeah I for me you really on like if, it, if it's going to be like a half an hour effort the first 10 minutes you really it should be hard but it shouldn't be like that manageable like you should be breathing but you shouldn't be like dead and then it should just keep on i mean the the power should be the same but the effort should definitely come up uh quite a lot so you can see when I, when it gets but really sort of below five percent even below six percent really you get you get a good draft on the back you can see i'm not doing much obviously you have to surge to like get back on the wheel and stuff like that but generally it's pretty chill um so in terms of gearing i went for big ring for the first bit and then realized that it was it was just a bit dumb going big ring. Like if I was going maybe full gas, 100% from the bottom, averaging maybe 22, 23k an hour, then I think I would go full gas all the way. But it was this this bit. It, it does ramp up a little bit to 11%. And here it's like I was in the big ring grinding at 60k, and this is, that's just pointless. Like it's better to be in the small ring. Obviously, you lose a bit of a mechanical efficiency because you're in a, you're in smaller cogs. But I mean, at the same time, it's it's one of those things where it's easy to respond to attacks. Um, I think after the downhill, though, uh, maybe you should just stay big ring until it, get, it really does ramp up. Then you can see again, like the wattage is pretty chill on the wheel. Like we're surging a bit, but we're averaging. It's basically got out. So we started at three ten, and it basically ended up just going down to about three hundred, uh, more or less, by the time I decided to do whatever I did. Which I, I won't tell you what I've, what happens on this. Um, but anyway, you, you're um. You'll be able to see. It's hard to tell who's suffering. Hayden looks pretty good out the saddle, just chilling. David looks like he's hurting quite a lot on the front. He set a real cracker tempo. He did like three, well, for him, he did like 330 watts for the first like 10 minutes or something, which is pretty solid, to be honest. Like, I mean, I hope I'll be able to hold that for the whole thing. But even so, like, I mean, it was fast, um, especially on such a hot, like when it was quite hot. I feel like if we'd done this maybe like an hour or a half to two hours earlier, because it was about like nine o'clock maybe when we started, um, it would have been a lot better because there would have just been like less cars so you can sort of go on the inside of the road a bit more and also you're just allowed you can um I don't know you don't get hot like I could literally barely see it at one point so you can see here Hayden's struggling to hold the wheel exactly I'm not sure what he's doing I was just like yeah he's probably just chilling out like he's a pretty strong bloke I, I I thought I was gonna get dropped by everyone here so I was like ah oh, well you know he's probably just you know trying to stretch the legs a little bit and just letting it go and he's just feeling confident he knows he can hold the wheel 
Um, so I was like, all right, I'll just just keep staying behind. I was pretty content where I was. I was like, hey, this is an absolutely beautiful draft. Um, I'm absolutely loving this. I didn't know if I were going to swap turns or what. Like, I didn't really know what was going on. We didn't really talk about it before. But he, David was on the front. I was sort of like, I don't really want to do anything. I work on the front. I've done intervals. I'm not feeling it. Um, but obviously, you know, it depends. I wasn't sure how strong people are. It's, it's like, you can judge on what's per kilo. But, I mean, I was talking to Paul quite a lot this week. And it's like, the what's per kilo is hard because pound meters... I mean, that everyone claims that power meters are accurate, but, like, I mean, uh, my power meter, I know, overreads by probably about 5 to 10 watts, more or less, um, or I'm just a little bit heavier, because comparing to Caden's power meter, he weighs 60 kilos, I weigh 60 kilos, uh, and I generally was doing about 10 watts more than him. So that might be I'm a little bit heavier, or it might just be, like, my power meter's not accurate, but also, like, my bike is 100% very inefficient at this moment in time. Actually, just as we speak, it's getting fixed now, so hopefully... Hopefully, when I next do an effort, I should feel a lot nicer and I should go faster for the same given wattage. You can see again here, there's a lot of below 300s, like 260, 250 on the wheel. And I mean, it's like, that's pretty good. Like, you can imagine if you had a big peloton up here, which hopefully there's supposed to be a bunch race up Deutsche a tap, which will be fun. Um, if there's a, when there's a big peloton, it, you get a real good dust. But you can see here, what I do is around this corner, I just go to the up like next to him and that means i can drop back in and i basically spend a lot less energy because otherwise you end up surging around the, these corners so it's a bit like you're doing a crit like you just move uh, move around them and then slot back in uh and it just allows you to expend not much, not much wattage if you saw around that corner i was doing like 150 170 watts around that corner because it really does often on these corners um they're really smooth and like shallow gradient around the corner and then they ramp up just after it so if you think about it if you can go on the outside and carry more speed into it because you're drafting and when they accelerate up that climb, you then sit in and you don't have to do as much of a surge, which definitely helps. Like maybe because we only have two riders in front, it's not as, as big a thing. But you can imagine if there's a 20-guy 20, a 20 group, I mean, if you're last wheel, like around those corners, you're going to have to be surging quite a lot um, to get back on the wheel. Um, well, obviously, you get the draft, but it's just always the way. Think, you always have to think of ways that you can just save your legs a little bit more and reduce the accelerations. Because let's be honest, it's, it's not easy, but it's, it's so much easier to hold a given target wattage. So if you were just like holding 330 watts today, boom. But imagine if you were trying to hold 330 watts, but you kept, kept on having to go above and below. It's so much harder for your body. Like, you just can't do it, um, which is why everyone uses normalized power to try and illustrate that, that steady state efforts are far, far easier uh, in comparison to just doing uh, constant accelerations. Um, and that's really how you can crack people as well. If you want to crack someone, just accelerate the whole time. And then if you're stronger than them, then that will happen. But you can see around this corner, again, out the corner, I surge up to 400 watts uh, just because it suddenly gets steeper. I mean, everyone likes to ride with power um, and just hold the same power, but like on these climbs, when it does get steeper, it does make sense to add a little bit more power just because on a 10% gradient, like, obviously, um, you just have less wind resistance. And wind resistance, as I said in my other video, is not proportional to speed. So if you add more watts on the faster part, you're not going to go that much faster. But if you add it on the steep part, you will actually go faster because there's just a lot less drag so it's better always to just surge it a little bit and just keep momentum like the thing with this is that everyone get, does get obsessed sometimes with the watts but it's like in reality no one cares about your watts at the end of the day the, the, the what people care about and this is what taylor finney says is your average speed so your average speed is really what matters up this climb therefore having average power is good okay on a climb but if it's rolling sometimes average speed is good to have because you actually what you want to keep is your average speed up so when you're going round corners and stuff you really want to try and keep the average speed. Obviously, you're just going to surge at 700 watts to keep the average speed up, but you've got to think, like, how can I carry momentum over this um, this little rise? If I add some more watts here, will that help me? Um, and often on this climb, probably not as much as other things, but if it really is quite rampy, sometimes it really does help to accelerate over the top of rises and just keep that momentum a lot more uh, in comparison to just holding steady power the whole time. Um, like, obviously, you want to ha hold steady-ish power. Like, you don't want to be surging massively 800 watts on the steep stuff and then 200 watts the flat stuff but you know you can just do a little bit a uh, little bit extra on the steeper stuff a little bit less on the flatter stuff so you can see here we're now about eight minutes in and this is when you, you don't start to hurt but you start to look at the, the time and you're like oh bloody hell, i've still got a long way to go because normally uh, you people are used to doing 20 minute efforts 15 minute efforts 10 minute efforts and so like for even for a 20 minute effort which i mean for me is normally the longest effort i do because whenever i've really done efforts well, when I was in Adelaide, it was I was always doing FTP test up Green Hill. That was 20 minutes. Or if uh, in the UK, we don't really have many long climbs. And if they do, they're normally around 20 minutes, um, if we're lucky. So, I mean, you think nine minutes in, you're like, oh, I'm almost halfway. But on this, it's just like, you're maybe a third of the way through, maybe. Like, I mean, if if you're fast, you're, this takes 27 minutes, more or less. 27 minutes is like top 10 on, on, on Strauss. That's decent, decent effort. Um, but you can see for sure that, like, 
these are pretty different. Like, in terms of preparation for the TT, like, you can see we didn't really take it that seriously. Like, um, Hayden still got bottles on, saddlebag on. Like, if I was taking this super seriously, I had no bottles, or maybe one bottle half full um, to try and save some weight. No saddlebag, no pump. Uh, Hayden's got his lights on, you take that off. Um, just because I had two bottles, and which is they look not full, but, you know, not empty either, and a saddlebag and a pump. And obviously, like, it doesn't really matter because it's just training, but if you wanted to get a good time, then obviously you take all that stuff off because uh, it would help you. So it's interesting trying to see how people are feeling. I mean, as soon as you put your jersey open, I mean, that's, that's a clear sign of you going pretty hot on this climb. I think I'd never do that, uh, no matter how hot I was, really, because the aero draft, I think, is just more important than the heat. Like, I, for me, I find, like, opening up the jersey doesn't help that much. But when you're going 22K, I mean, for me, anytime you're going over sort of 16, 17K an hour, I feel like the aero draft is, the aerodynamic, uh, like, I mean, people say it's 20K an hour is when most of your energy goes from to the wind. But even at 16K an hour, I mean, it's like it's still a, a good proportion is, um, is wind resistance. And for me, it, it makes sense just to close the jersey. Just you save watts, um, like just every little helps. So you can see we're going out the saddle, we're surging again. Uh, up to 350 there. Again, it's not crazy. You can see Hayden's Hayden's lungs start to stroll. He's he's rocking from left to right, and it's an interesting sign. Like um, just looking at how people are climbing this. David looks pretty confident uh, ahead. Like he might have his jersey open, but like he looks pretty pretty good. He's got a nice high cadence. Pretty chilled out. You can see he's not rolling across the bike. Um, but then again, some people have that style. Like I I definitely do have that style. I'm trying to get better at it. Um, of not trying to roll as much and trying to just be more calm. And sometimes I'm good at it when I feel I'm really concentrated and I'm just like really in the mood. But when I'm suffering a lot and like I feel like when I'm not not doing well, if that makes sense, like when I'm suffering and not going fast, then I really start like throwing my bike everywhere. But when I'm like suffering and feeling good, then often I can just keep it together and just stay very relaxed and calm. And I think that's one thing that people see, always say, and it's a massive cliche, um, and I've said this before, Everyone always is like, oh, you've got to stay calm, you've got to stay relaxed. And it's like, that sounds really easy. But actually, in order to do it, it's pretty hard. And I found, like, on this one, I wasn't, I, ne I was, as I always say, I wasn't concentrated on the effort. I was concentrated on, like, the numbers and everything else. I wasn't thinking, like, how can I actually get the most amount of watts out? Um, obviously, when you're in the wheel, I find it a lot, a lot easier to relax. And I think a lot of other people do, which is why pacing, even if you're not going fast up a climb, is just quite useful because you no longer have to think about, anything all you have to do is think about holding the wheel which is quite like a primal instinct and it's just like something very obvious to do uh sorry about the plane noise um but yeah it's just quite an easy thing to do you can do you can practice i mean you can practice doing efforts and like a lot of what practicing doing efforts is, isn't necessarily like testing you physiologically it's more psychologically and learning how to really hurt yourself and just get used to the pain that you don't even think about it anymore like you're just right right this is what i'm doing um and that's it. Like your body is no longer sort of thinking about like anything else. Your mind, sorry, is no longer thinking about anything else. It's just like, right, we're doing an effort. This is what you need to do. You need to stay relaxed. You need to breathe well, concentrate on your breathing and just push. And it sounds very simple and it is very simple, but it's actually re relatively hard to do because when you're really hurting, you always try and make excuses. You always try and take your mind off the thing. And for me, taking my mind off the riding is never a good thing. What I find is always better to do is just to concentrate really on things that you can control. You can control your breathing, so think about it. You can see here, Hayden is now suffering quite a lot. You can see he's got his hands on the tops, which is definitely a change of position. You can see he's leaning down a little bit more. His elbows are coming out. He's pedaling not as smoothly as he was. His cadence has dropped quite, well, not quite a lot, but maybe five, five RPM, and you'll be able to see this. At, at the time, I wasn't really concentrating on Hayden very much. Like I, He looked pretty calm from where I thought, but actually looking at back, you can see he's looking pretty pretty panicked you can see like the water bottle placement like he was uh, struggled to put that in which obviously means like he's not he's not in top form uh and it's interesting to see this because at the time i literally had no idea i thought oh he looks really good um but you'll see you i mean you know what's going to happen now because i've just been talking about it uh but for sure it's not going to end well for young hayden unfortunately um but yeah you, it's just interesting trying to trying to figure out when people are going to get dropped because hayden i think is he's an experienced rider he's ridden in the rnrs uh like national road series in australia and he knows, I guess, how to hide his suffering a lot better than most people. Um, because from my perspective, obviously, like, I know he's hurting. But, I mean, the wheel was starting to go here. And I could tell. But I was like, mm, nah, I think he's good. And I was pretty sure he's pretty fit, guys. Um, he's got in some good form at this moment. But you can see here, he's just really struggling, head and going across. So I surge up to 400, try and close the gap. I tried to close it not very aggressively. I tried to just, you know, help him across. But I think that was game over. And I think mentally that was really just the time when he cracked. But now we get to see David. So David's now ahead of us. Pretty lean bloke. You can see some good calf definition there. He's got a TCR as well. Good bloke. Unfortunately, his wheels, he was saying, um, 
his wheels after about a year, 17,000k or something, they just said cheerio. But you can see his jersey's dra flapping around a lot, so if I was, I was him, I'd definitely close that jersey up, but, you know, each to their own. Um, so David's done a big turn on the front, and I was about 15 minutes, so I had my timer on, and I decided, like, at 15 minutes, I'm going to go to the front and just give him, some, give him a turn, because he's really just drilled us up this climb. I'm doing literally 100, like 170 watts on his wheel. I feel like, you know, I don't want to be that guy who just sits on his wheel the whole time, last like 100 meters, just sprints off and takes the, takes the win. So anyway, you see here, I come past, put it up to 400, and then I try and not be too antisocial and really surge now, but unfortunately, I believe I do. Uh, so you can see here's Christian on, on the left, who's just been dropped by Anna, poor bloke. Um, and Anna's up here looking around, seeing that we're going. So you can see here, like, I didn't I didn't go to the front and absolutely drill it, but I did look it down and saw my powers, like, 300, and I was like, oh, I can probably hold, like, 315 for this climb. Um, but I sort of forgot that was that was when I was fresh and that was all the rest of it. So I, I suddenly launched up, up to, like, 360 around this corner, up to 400, and I'm like, bloody hell, that's just far too exciting, mate. You need to calm down a bit, boy. You need to calm down quite a lot because there's no way you're going to be able to hold, like, 350 for the remaining 15 minutes um, of this climb, considering you've already done efforts, and it's quite a hot day. Um, hopefully, in the future, maybe we will, but anyway, so it's 8% gradient. We're going about 20k an hour up here, which is a good effort. You can see, like, there's just no way I'm sustaining this, and I think I did what David did at the beginning. David was saying afterwards that he just overextended himself, um, and around this point, I had a little glance around, and I saw that David was on my wheel, and now that was actually a really bad thing for me mentally because I just suddenly... I just had no motivation. Like, if someone's on your wheel and you're, like, trying to give them a turn, and then suddenly, like, the race aspect, you're suddenly like, all right, I need to need to hold the wheel, I need to do the... Like, I need to hold the what, sorry, because I want to either drop them or I want to get them a good time, and it's nice um, just helping someone else out because uh, they helped you. But instead, as soon as he was dropped, I was like, oh, my, I've still got, like, what, 15 to 20 minutes to go. Like, I feel pretty bad. I've already done efforts. And all the little, da like, all the little pieces of self-doubt start creeping in. You're like, oh... Do I really want to do this? And then you can see I'm just like not really paying attention. Like I'm going up to 450 watts. Up, it's like, what the hell are you doing? You just need to calm down, mate. Figure out what you want to, want from this effort. And that's just to like mentally train yourself and physiologically train yourself to really be able to push at longer efforts. So you just got to do it, mate. Like just, you know, don't don't give yourself an option. Don't give yourself a way out. Just be like, yeah, I'm doing it. Um, and this is what I did. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to settle in and I want to hold 300 watts for half an hour. That's my goal pretty simple um to say but sort of harder to do at this moment uh at the beginning i mean i it was like yeah we didn't go crazy so it was only like 310 at the beginning so it wasn't like i burnt all my matches at the beginning and was slowly crying at the bottom at the end and i managed to hold the power to be fair not like not that badly um at the end um but it's definitely one of these climbs doistep where i mean for me i haven't ridden enough it all looks identical like even trying to do this video and trying to like sync things up like, i was like what it just all looks the same like i'm starting to get know a little bit more um but I still, like, I don't know it that well. Um, and it really is just, it's just quite soul-destroying. When, you, when you're when you just here, you're, like, 17 minutes through. And it's like, I have quite a long way to go. But in order to counter this, what I want to do is more tempo efforts for an hour. So I want to go basically all the way to the very top of this. So Doi's Tepe is only, like, probably about halfway up. Ten, it was, no, it's a little over halfway up the mountain. The actual final is Doi Pui, which is about an 18-kilometer climb. And I think the more the more longer efforts I do, the more this will seem like just in terms of like occupying my mind and getting used to doing these efforts, it will just not seem as much um, because suddenly you'll be like, oh, we're not even going the whole way. Um, so I did that this morning. I, I kept going. Uh, obviously, most of well, I did basically did sweet spot to throw to tap and then did like had a five minute rest and then kept going for another 10 minutes, which was good just because it sort of taught me like how to well 10 minutes of sweet spot and I just kept kept running all the way up the mountain uh to the palace so not all the way so there's still maybe 4k left so I did a 14k climb but it's good just to train yourself that like you know 10k climb 11k climb it's not even that long but then obviously it is long compared to most of the climbs I do which are what below five kilometers four kilometers even in the in the UK um, as you can see the gradient's flat, starting to flatten off here, and this is really when you just want to hold the power and just like not try and give up. Often I find like when I when it gets flat, I actually like getting out the saddle just to you know knock the speed up a little bit, just mainly for the ego. Um, I mean, like when you climb, I mean, like people always say like you know your ego is bad or whatever, but like when you're climbing, it's quite good to try and massage your ego and pretend you're going really fast because then you actually feel a lot more confident about life, and you also feel like. A lot, a lot better. Like, if you've ever done an FTP test up a climb and you've done one with a tailwind and one with a headwind, I mean, you know you're going to feel better with a tailwind because you suddenly have that confidence boost. And it's the same here. Like, if you, when you suddenly ramp up to 20k an hour, 
you, there's just that feel of speed and you're like, wow, I'm actually climbing fast. But when you're like grinding up 10% gradient at 18K an hour, 16K an hour, you're just like, oh my, this is, this is pretty slow. Um, so yeah, for sure, I was just trying to, you know, keep, keep my mind going um, whenever I could. Like looking back at the power, it's not bad. It's just a bit too surgy, um, which is not really good. I mean, this climb is not... It's not hard to hold consistent power, but it's, it's not like completely flat either. You can see around every single corner, there's little kicks up and it's really easy to get carried away like I've done before and launch it up to like 350, 400 watts, um, which is just not really the best way to climb uh, efficiently because then it means you've got to have some periods when you're below that. Okay, maybe you can do that into the bottom of it, but I just find it's better just to try and hold a bit more consistent power. Um, like obviously when it's steep for a long period of time, it makes sense to, to apply a little bit more power, but... It's just not one of those climbs, like, it's not one of those climbs like Norton Summit where it's just like, if you're doing intervals, for instance, it's literally the easiest climb. You just literally chuck it in one gear and just ride, and then that, that's your power. You pick your cadence, pick your gear, but here it's like, you've got, you're, there's quite a lot of gear changes. Um, so to keep the power, you've got to be concentrating, and obviously that gets harder. You can see my little head bob bobbing here, um, the shadow, and I, I quite like doing that. I mean, I do need to, like, realize that it's not great because obviously you're wasting energy, but also it's more in terms of, like, a psychological thing people as soon as you start bobbing their head they gain a lot of confidence and they're suddenly like oh maybe he's suffering a bit but i mean in reality i know i'm not suffering because i was bobbing their head for about like probably five minutes in or something um but other people will gain confidence and that's not what you want when you're climbing in a group you want people to sort of be not scared of you but just be a bit like oh he looks really strong like if i attack he's just gonna like gun me um you don't want people to feel really good and be like oh i'll attack him it'll be fine um because then people will just gonna attack you the whole time and it'll be a lot harder. But you can see again, the gradient here is a bit bit bad. It gets up to like 9% there for a little bit and that just saps your average speed. But that's really when like, if you're feeling strong, you can just do that little surge that I was talking about before um, and just sort of surge it up. But the problem was is that I just like, the surge I did do just wiped me out. And I think by this point I was just so dead. And like the heat, I literally like, so midway through I had to take my sunglasses off. I think now I'm taking my sunglasses off, trying to sort it out because you can see my power drop there, like down to 240. Um, because with the, with the sunglasses on, I just find my face gets way too sweaty and then sweat drips into your eyes and then you can't see and then it's absolutely painful. Uh, on the small downhill on this part, I literally couldn't see um, on my left eye because there was so much sweat. Luckily, my jersey wasn't too bad, so I could sort of wipe my eye against that. But it's really not not a pleasant feeling, which is why if in, in, in the future, if I want to do these TTs and get good time, I should definitely do it. In the morning, uh, well, not obviously in the morning, but further, like, in the morning, more like 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, something like that. Uh, and in terms of warm-up for these, like, I quite like getting well warmed up. So this morning when I did my first sweet spot efforts, I had literally zero warm-up. It was like five-minute ride to Doi's Step from where I'm staying. Um, and that, I don't think that's good for me. I really do quite prefer a long warm-up. So in some ways, doing the sweet spot, like, maybe I did a bit too much, but maybe just, like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of like tempo sweet spot is always good before an effort and maybe a little bit of like four or five minutes of uh, threshold um, in like a different thing. So maybe do 10, 15 minutes of tempo up here, uh, then just chill for 10 minutes and I'd probably do like three, four minutes of uh, threshold to similar pace to what I'd hope to hold this, hold for uh, 25 minutes, half an hour. Um, and I think that's a good warm up for me. It like, just allows me to feel, feel like warm and then hopefully that would add up to around an hour or so just before. Um, just before the climb as well like probably don't wait around at the bottom if you have the choice maybe meet a little bit further away and then ride there so it's not like you're starting from complete cold um, there's just little things you can do uh, which will help and you're, to be honest like you have to find this out yourself you have to find out if you need a long warm up or you don't need a long warm up but I know for sure that a long warm up definitely helps me um, it might just be psychological that I, now I think a long warm up <laughs> helps me it does um, it now helps me because it's like the whole placebo effect or it might actually be that uh, the long warm-up does help but you can see here again I'm getting a little bit excited around these corners but it was it was almost one of those things where I just wanted it to end and if I was like oh I just hate this little steep rise like it's gonna slow my power down and just sprint it out there which is not always the cleverest thing to do because then around here I'm doing like 230 watts it's like well done mate would have been better probably just to hold 300 on that part like it wasn't really steep enough to justify the sprint um, so you can see you cut the corners yeah I don't go across the yellow line because that's just a bit dangerous and like is there any point really and probably not I mean like I don't know on the bunt race hopefully the whole thing will be closed and then we'll get like 25 minutes each because we'll all be swapping turns and the whole road will be closed but anyway I'm not so sure about that but anyway just about this point you can see it is now downhill 
very slightly, but it allows you a rest. And this is when I literally just gave up. I was like, uh, 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 I feel so bad. I literally couldn't see. You can see I'm swerving all across the road trying to sort out my eye. It gets to like minus 1%. I hit, I think you normally hit about 40k an hour down here, maybe a little bit faster. You could probably hit faster if you're actually pedaling, unlike myself. Um, but now again, I'm just trying to get as error as possible because I'm like, I could probably sit up and do 300 watts here or I could just get error and try and hold as close to 300 as I can. Um, so I'm holding a little less than 300 here, but I'm relatively error. And this is when my wheel just felt dreadful. Like on this part here, I was just like, what is going on with my wheel? And I've had this for so long. So finally, instead of making excuses, I've actually went to the bike shop and said like, lads, can you please sort this out? So hopefully they will sort them out. They all seem pretty friendly there, which is good. And uh, they look like they sort of understood all my problems and hopefully they'll be able to sort them all out because we will find out in a couple of hours. Uh, but again, here, the what's just like, meh, it's just gone. Like, so hard to find motivation. If someone was on my wheel, it would have been a different story. If, someone, if I was on someone else's wheel, it would have been a different story. But that's the whole thing. Like, there's no way with no one here I would have gone this hard. I would. There's no way I would have held 300 watts or 296 watts, which is what I held for half an hour. There's no way I would have done it if, so, if I was literally finished that sweet spot and then, someone, and then I was like, yeah, I should do that. Like, I just literally died after 10 minutes. I'm like, nah. But with the sun change in attitude and suddenly it's like oh other people are there oh you don't want to get dropped it's like nah i'm not getting dropped because I, I really hate getting dropped like quite a lot it really does annoy me when i get dropped um so i'm suddenly just like nah i'm going all the way to the end i'm no one's overtaking me um as soon as i like went past david i kept looking back i was like nah i've got this in the bag mate you're not slowing up come on uh and with this climb the thing is like, like literally 10 15 seconds and you're out of sight and there's no way they can see you so for, the, for all their like intents and purposes, you could be a minute out of the road. They just have no idea. So that's quite good psychologically because it meant that it doesn't really, it's not like a straight climb where you can see them. You can make calculations, you can count, you can figure out if you're gaining or you're going, going back on this climb. It's relatively hard to figure out if you're doing that or not. Uh, but yeah, it's really just, it's just like horrible. I remember going up here in my like, smallest gear, just like literally crying. Just like, man, I don't want to get to the top. <laughs> like, it sounds really pathetic when you think about it back because it's like you're riding your bike, you're doing what you love and you're riding up a hill fast, you've dropped everyone else. Like, come on, mate, you don't have much to complain about. But in the, at that time, you're just like, you only concentrate on the things that are really hurting you and you're just like, oh, that's the climb <laughs> and I'm not enjoying that. And also, like, I don't know, it's just a, it's just a long time. But anyway, the KOM guy's now finished. He finished in like 25 minutes. So, you know, you, it does give you like, appreciation of actually like i'm i'm very slow well not very slow but pretty slow compared to like actual hitters apparently he did 6.2 watts per kilo for 25 minutes which is a decent effort uh pretty close to being uh, yeah, i think he's like sort of a continental rider so that's a solid effort from the young lad um and i i hope i like i'd like to get within about three minutes of that maybe 28 minutes mm, quite like that but i don't know we'll see um hopefully hopefully if we get paced i don't know because that's the thing, I, I, like, I talked to Paul and I was like, oh, do you want to pace me? He's like, oh, you know, you can, you can pace yourself and that ever. And I was like, yeah, but the draft, like, the draft helps quite significantly at the beginning, as you can see. Because you think at the beginning we were doing maybe 14 minute pace, four, no, sorry, we were doing 28 minute pace because we, we got to the part, which is normally about halfway, the waterfall, um, in about 14 minutes. So you think roughly we're probably doing like 28, 29 minute pace. And that's because I was sitting on the wheel doing 300 watts. But now, for the second half of the climb, when I said chow chow to David, I averaged a little less than 300 watts because we averaged 296. So it's probably averaged maybe 293, 290. Um, and that's what really slowed me down because I'm not on the wheel, I'm doing 290 watts. And that's quite different um, in comparison to being on the wheel. In terms of the perfect rider for this, I think perfect riders probably is someone like 65, 66 kilos who's got, you know, maybe not as good watts per kilo as some of the pure lightweight climbers, but just like has the numbs and you can just do it like obviously the guy who has i believe is like 58 kilos anyway so i'm sort of talking rubbish like if you've got the watts per kilo you're going to do well but it's definitely not one of those climbs where it's like it like an eight percent seven percent climb um probably just yeah eight percent climb over it's like watts per kilo is just the most important thing by far because there's not much time you're going to be spending over like 25k an hour but on this climb there's there's not significant but there's a good amount of time when you're spending close to 25k an hour uh which is really when just like the, the error effects pretty pretty significant. I mean, on an eight percent climb, like if you're doing six watts per kilo, you're getting around 19, 20k an hour anyway. Um, but on this, um, at five watts per kilo, more or less, which is why I did. I probably did less, probably more like 4.8, 4.9 maybe. Um, I averaged like 19 something k an hour. I think it was something about that, which is all right, but it's not it's not nuts to be honest. Um, considering that the roads here are really good there's pretty much no wind there was a little headwind at the beginning but like if you're talking about wind in thailand you're sort of a bit 
they're a bit clueless because there's, there's barely any wind and you can see it's such a sheltered climb anyway, it changes direction so much. So it, it's really not, not that important. Uh, the wind, so, I mean, you do have a lot of advantages here, like the VAM you're going to get here and the speed that you climb at, you're not, not really going to come close. Maybe in the Alps you might because they've got smooth roads as well, but compared to most places, like, um, you definitely do climb faster than normal. So anyway, we're coming up to the very last hairpin. If you've ridden Doisetep, you will know there's a little waterfall to the left, and basically, um, you'll see this is the steep part. So <laughs> it's pretty ch chill, as you've seen. It reaches 11% for a little bit, but it's like, come on, mate, it's not really that hard because it's only like maybe 20 meters long. But anyway, this is when it stops to ramp up. So it's 10% here, which is, you know, it's like, it stings the legs a little bit, especially at the end of an effort. Um, and you can see my speed is dropping quite a lot because I'm going down to like 17, well, I was down to like 14K an hour, which really is quite bad. Um, and that's the thing with this climb. You do definitely want to leave something in the tank because you really want to be sprinting up this last part because it does get quite steep. Um, last like 400 meters maybe is like 10, 11% average maybe, which is, which is a good sting in the tail, which why when the race is up here, it's going to be interesting because it, it might just literally be a bunch, bunch kick up this, which would be great. I'd love it. But anyway, I'm so excited for that. So around here... When I was getting out of the saddle, my calves were real close. You know when you have that feeling? I also took this corner absolutely terribly as well. I still haven't taken it well at any point. You really want to surge up. You can see it gets up to 18% apparently, which is, which is steep. Uh, but what, what was it? Oh, yeah, my calves. They have that little twinge. And you feel it. You're out of the saddle. It has that little twinge. And you're like, ah, uh, I think my calves are very close to cramping here. So I had to get back in the saddle because I was like, I really can't. I can't risk cramping here because if I cramp, I... I mean, that's going to lose me maybe 10, 10 seconds straight away, 15 seconds maybe, just because you have to stop pedaling, try and sort it out, maybe give it a little massage or whatever, one, while your straw's trying to pedal. Uh, it's just not a very nice feeling. And this bit was when I was really breathing hard. I remember feeling my heart. My heart was actually beating quite a lot. And I was like, oh, no, this is not very nice. Um, and I was in an absolute state at this point, just like really, I hadn't, hadn't pushed this hard for a decent amount of time. Um, and it definitely t shows... It shows quite a lot because you just you just can't do it back to back when you're not used to pushing. Like you just you just really struggle after doing a little bit. So you can see the the clock is ticking down. We're on 31 minutes and 30, uh, and I think we end up with like a 32 something. So you, this is the basically the last part. This is really when you want to be at like 400 watts, just holding it. And here I was sort of like, oh, oh I can't really be bothered to do this. But I was like, ah, oh, David might catch me. I sort of knew he wouldn't, but even so, I was like had to try and trick my brain into doing an effort because at this point you really do just want to absolutely give up and just cry because it really is a very painful painful thing this last part it just doesn't really get below 10 percent and it's just not what you really want it's quite a rude rude um end to a climb uh so yeah there you go that is Doisetep full gas i hope you did enjoy this commentary like i was running out of things to say at the end which you can probably guess uh but it was good uh enjoyed it a lot i'm going to be doing more tts just because they're, they're good and um good training benefit good mental benefit this is where the segment ends about here, more or less. 32 minutes, 10. I'll post the data afterwards. Average about 296 watts. So anyway, cheers for watching. I uh, hope you did enjoy this. We've got a race coming up on Sunday, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, so I'll be filming that. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>